Number two. Are we learning? What is the second lesson that we learn tonight from an overcomer? You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and your expectations are defined. Please underline the word defined. Luke chapter 18, please. From verse 39 to 41, my goodness, someone is being radically transformed. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more that he being blind Bartimaeus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. Watch this. And when he was come near, Jesus, your Jesus, the overcomer, asked the man a question. What will thou that I should do for you? I am a compendium of limitless possibilities. But then my response to you will be at the instance of your defining what your desire is. The man said that I may receive my sight. The man would have said that you help to talk to the king for me. That they should be giving me arms every day. Just because you see someone in a state does not mean they are willing to come out of it. Giving definition to your desires will coordinate the power of God to meet you at the point of your need. Lesson number two. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. Mark eleven twenty four. My goodness, please pay attention to what you are learning now. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire when you pray on those things specific things believe that you receive as them and thou shall have them i will tell you why many people never become successful i will tell you why many people never actualize great things in life they have no definition over their desires they have vague ideas you ask an average person what do you want god to do for you they will say things like maybe general goodness just to show up for me or you ask them what is wrong with you the first assignment of every doctor is not treatment is to diagnose what the problem is and diagnosis can take a long time am i right on that they will need to send you to run a test and the result can show multiple possibilities then they subject you to a more intricate test the joy of the doctor is that he finally zooms down people begin to rejoice over diagnosis not just treatments they are finally happy that we've known the name the moment it has a name you begin your your chances are high that you will be healed and you will survive when that sickness has a name you ask any medical practitioner the worst state any doctor can be in is trying to treat a patient whose condition has no definition that is true for medicine it is also true for your life what kind of believer do you want to become i just want to love god that is vague i just want to be great that is vague I hate poverty that is still vague I want to be rich that is vague I want to be a big man very vague ignorantly vague because a big man is is a statement that was not even introduced by big men hallelujah are we together you cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined giving definition to your desires is a miracle i can tell you this it is in this area that both religion and science and psychology they come together they all agree that your life will revolve greater when there is definition to your expectations what do you desire that i may receive my sight when your desires are defined you will know when the goals have been achieved 
Alléluia. Lord, bring increase. Lord, bring increase. What does that mean? How do you know your prayer has been answered? Lord, take away shame from my life. By what definition will you know shame has left? How do you know God has answered you? And how do you know the devil is stopping the prayer? Lord, let my destiny help ascend for me. That is wonderful. But what is the definition? Now, we pray generally, and you hear me prophesy generally, but when it has to do with the life of a victorious one, an overcomer, ladies and gentlemen, there needs to be definition in your life. Most believers want to succeed, but they are totally at a loss as to what success is and the indices that they will use to measure success. I have helped you in this house and I will help you again that when you talk about success, there are about seven areas that if you do not excel in, you are not successful. Can I do a one minute recap for you? Number one, very quickly, please write it down. We are still on point two. Number one, your spiritual growth. The first area that you measure success in, you want to make progress, you want to advance, number one is your spiritual growth. Number two, mental transformation. You are successful to the degree to which you now adopt superior belief systems that translate towards a winning and a victorious life. I refer you to my message, the victor's mentality. The mentality of a victor. The second area that we measure success is in the area of your mental transformation. There is nothing called a billionaire madman. No. You give a madman one billion, you did not help him. He's not even aware because he's not in a mental state that is fine and healthy. Number three. The third area to measure success is in the area of purpose. And of course, you can call it your ambition, your career, whatever it is. Purpose and your ambition. That which you desire to do as far as life and destiny is concerned. Can I continue? The fourth area to measure success is your health and wellness. You are only successful in the kingdom to the degree to which you are healthy and you are well. Your physical agility and your wellness is a very, very potent index for measuring success. I'm teaching you this so that when you say, Lord, I desire to be successful, you understand the areas. Are you seeing that now? Your mind can cooperate with your prayer so that you can get answers and you will know God has answered you. Your spiritual growth and advancement, mental transformation, purpose and destiny, health and wellness. Number five, your financial well-being. Usually this is where most people zoom down to. When they are talking about success, they are really talking about money. Financial well-being. It is true that in all your being successful, if you lag in this area, you are not wholesomely, you are not entirely successful. Number six, relationships. The sixth area that measures and defines your being successful is the quality of the relationships that you have and you enjoy in your life. You are as secured from an earth standpoint as the relationships that you have. Let me repeat myself again. From an earth standpoint, you are as secured as the relationships that you have. Number seven. The seventh area that measures success generally is fulfillment fulfillment and meaning meaning m-e-a-n-i-n-g meaning the area of fulfillment and meaning that you want to ensure that your life counts you want to be satisfied knowing that you are serving god and that you are becoming a blessing to humanity you cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined watch this if you have your roof leaking in your house do you know sometimes the leakage can start from one point or let me use a plumbing issue let's say you have you know a leakage from your pipe the water can flow say from your living room 
or from the toilet, the bathroom, and then it flows down to the bedroom. It may even flow to other areas in, in, in you know, maybe even to your living room. But when you are solving the problem, you, it's not where the water is. You have to go back and find out where is the point from where that leakage started. Is the longevity of that leakage that caused that damage to even reach your living room. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? So you have to go past the living room and then you finally you get to the point where you say ah so it's from maybe the toilet or the sink and then you start to fix it there when you fix that one you can clean up the water that is there and you know you have done a good job but when you leave the part that is still leaking and try to mop up the water in the living room you only wasted your time am i right on that there are many many people who are just trying to mop up problems bringing temporal solutions they have not yet brought definition to their desires there are believers who want empowerment from God but they do not have a clear definition we think in pictures that is the reason why you hear a lot of people will tell you that they have images that represent their future images now when that is done within the limit of scripture that is fine are we together now you understand why the Lord granted me that instruction to get the map of Abuja, get the map of Nigeria, get the map of Africa, and get the map of the globe. Why will God ask me to do that? I'm in a season of intense prayer, praying for the next level of koinonia, and God does not even start revealing to me where we will be meeting. He just says, you go and get the map. No wonder he told Abraham, he said, come out, count the stars. I want you are asking me to bless you but there is vagueness there is no definition I need to help your imagination so that I can release for you so you can understand what I have in store he said count the stars and he began to count and he was lost and he said so shall thy seed be finally verse 6 Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness there are things God wants to do this is why by my dear people believe in the power of dreams and visions it is god's way of helping to prepare your mind you see when you have seen something and you've held it in your imagination it becomes difficult for the devil to steal it from you so a young lady who just comes for koinonia receives a prophetic word from a poor and a mediocre family she goes back home and here's the spirit of grace you sit down and you see yourself standing in a place in a crusade ground ministering for instance or running an NGO a multinational NGO blessing people and you wake up I'm still in that room I'm still on the ground you are not there you've left that place it's just that you are not aware you don't know the power listen I'm not just playing with your mind no that you were able to receive that you are not in that condition again I'm telling you this it's just that it will take time for your body to get where your mind has gotten to but I can tell you at that instant that you received it the moment Mary said be it unto me according to your word she became pregnant hallelujah those consultants who teach people how to plan they usually teach people for instance in the area of finances when they want to help you they will say go and calculate how much does it take to run your family per week and you will see the person who is praying and crying and shouting saying I don't know how much is your chance school fees the last time I know I think it's around 70 or 80 around that and you cannot rise that way how much is your rent I don't know how much is your transportation I don't know God help me and God say, what do you want me to do for you now? How can I touch a destiny helper to help you? That is the reason why if God gives such a person one million, two million, he will rejoice and roll on the ground even if here and in two weeks he's back to his, or his former self again. Because there was no definition of desires. There will always be wastage of opportunities when there are no definitions to your desire hallelujah I truly believe watch this that part of the reason why Joseph 
excelled was because he prepared. He knew that based on the law of time and chance, one day I will stand before the king. It may take long. There is no guarantee. No date was given to me. And I'm saying this prophetically to someone. Do you know you are closer to meeting your helpers? Are you prepared? Have you imagined yourself in the boardroom? Or do you want until the day God now opens the door, you now disgrace yourself and your destiny as a result of lack of definition? Many years ago, let me tell you, many years ago, a younger, much younger version of myself back in our family house in Joss, I used to go to our boys' quarters in the night. You've heard my story. I will carry a mic, a stick now representing a mic, and I will be shouting at the back of that house, preaching alone. I never knew that my mom once peeped at me and she saw me doing it once. And I will sense the power of God. I'm preaching. That's koinonia there in the bush. It's true. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Let me sincerely admit to you, if you do not have a definition for your desires, it will never come to pass. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. Oh, I'm going to be a great man of God. Do you have individuals that represent where you are getting to? Oh, I'll be greater than anybody. Be like them first, then you can be greater than them. Some of these foolish and blind strategies that people bring is the reason why they don't rise. They will tell you, I'm going to be greater than, have an idea. I'm going to be a great crusade person. There are a few people that can be a starting point, priming your creativity. Reinhard Bonke is there of blessed memory. Billy Graham is there of blessed memory. At every level, there is someone who can relate to your desires. Lessons from an overcomer. Are we learning? You must give definition to your desire. You will see someone who is in a one room, but he has already given an architect, an architect friend. He says, help me draw a three bedroom flat. And the man said, well, I will draw it all, but I know you are wasting your time. No. And he will draw it and write it there. Or some persons will spell their goals in the name of Jesus by the end of 2023. I should be worth at least 10 million naira. May not be too much at whatever level. Someone may laugh at you and say, just that, no problem. Allow them. You just keep dreaming with God. In the name of Jesus, as a man of God, I should have the privilege at the end of the year. I should be serving his grace to these people and this region. Planning is powerful. And there is no planning without deploying your imagination. Listen, I want you to respect what you are hearing. Believe me, even from an intellectual standpoint, you will not hear what you are hearing without paying a price. I assure you on this. Ask any consultant and any intelligent person, what you are hearing for free is what people will pay tens of thousands of dollars to travel for seminars to listen to. I pray and hope that you respect it. Lesson number two from an overcomer is that when there is no definition to your desires, there is no sustainable success. Let's rush. Are we learning? Lesson.